Hello, everyone. I'm here with my dear friend and spiritual sister, Noriani. We've talked to her husband, Shurjo. She's speaking to us from their apartment in Mumbai, where she and Shurjo run the Mumbai Center. And I often, in all these interviews, I've been asking people how they met Swami and so on. But as it happens, Noriani has written this absolutely gorgeous little book called My Heart Remembers at Swami Kriyananda. And so everything about how she met Swami and how she spent the last several years of his life as his personal caregiver and absolutely constant companion. If you haven't had the pleasure of reading this book, it's a real treasure. You can get the e-version by writing to Ananda Mumbai. Or if you're in India, you can get the book version. If you're in America, write please to Ananda Palo Alto or to me personally, and we'll arrange for it. And also in Italy, from Ananda Edizione. So having said all of that, now, Mariani, some of the nicest experiences that I had with Swamiji were actually when there were the three of us together when you were taking care of him in Los Angeles. Mm. So when you, when I mean, it's a natural thing for people to ask, sort of like, what did it feel like for you to be, what would I say, responsible for Swamiji in that way at the end of his life? Uh, how, how did you see yourself in it? How did it feel? Um, it has two sides mm -hmm. because in one sense, I never really felt responsible in the sense I, I had to do anything major to take, take care of his life. I mean, he was responsible and there was so, you know, master taking care of his life. But my responsibility was to keep my energy as high and as sharp as possible so I could really follow where he wanted to go. So that in itself was the greatest responsibility that I took upon myself mm -hmm. to make sure that I was always present, that I was always aware of a subtle energy and to make sure I didn't get distracted mm -hmm. from anything else that would put me outside of that concentrated high energy that he lived in and he was trying to do something with that energy you know he, he was trying to redirect he was trying to give he was trying to build he was trying to manifest he was trying to share so my job and my responsibility for him was to make sure I, I could help right there when I was in his presence Mm -hmm. to, to share what he was trying to share or to manifest or to make things happen in whatever little way I could. Did you find that difficult? Not really. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I, I just felt the intuition, the energy, the attitude was was given to me as part of this, the package. As long as I was willing to uplift my energy and willing to do whatever was being asked. Mm -hmm. There was like a gift given in the process in, in the form of intuition, um, energy, willingness, and knowing kind of what, what needed to be done and how to do it. What would you consider, let me think, did you feel that the, the process of doing that, were you different at the end of Swami's life than you were when you started with him? Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> a completely different person. And, and it has not finished the process. Uh -huh. I, I, I keep, you know, it's an evolving process that you somehow keep changing, transforming yourself. But definitely, I think I gained a lot of... Um, how to apply spirituality you know in a in a practical way what it looks like is spirituality in whatever you do in your relationship serving master or 
you know, writing uh, in a conversation. It's, it's just, I, I gained that sense of how, how to do it in the world, you know, where everyone is dealing with one another, where, where things need to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I think I gained that the most, how to bring practical uh, spirituality into practical aspects of my life. That's a very interesting thing that you would say because what characterized Swami's last 10 years was it, almost his uh, departure from ordinary life mm -hmm. in the sense that his consciousness began to expand so much. So what, how would you describe, uh, if you could, what did that mean to put it into practical expression? What, what was he like? Was well, he well I, I came, when I came to him, my relationship with Master was, was very intimate, very personal, very, mm, it was like, um, not hidden, but it, was, it wasn't manifested outwardly. Uh -huh. So being in the presence of Swamiji, it was like a constant push of how to manifest your discipleship outwardly in a practical way that it can really help other people while you are manifesting your discipleship. And it has nothing to do with having that experience only in your meditation room, while you are praying, while you are chanting. There is this other huge aspect of our discipleship that needs to be manifested in the world. And in, in little things, you know, how you dress, how you behave, how you cook, how you clean, how you share with other people, how you write, how you help Swamiji to put, you know, to wear his shoes. So it's like I, I learned how to manifest outwardly my discipleship in a grounded way where people could easily relate to that rather than push it away. Is that, um, did you discover that that was natural to you or did you feel that this was, this was the tapasya, so to speak, of, of having to be there with him? I think I had it inside, but I didn't know how to bring it out. Uh -huh. I think each one of us has that, but we don't know how to manifest or how to express our discipleship in a way that both resonates with us, with our own personality, and at the same time, it's just benefiting, you know, a larger reality. So I didn't know how to do that when I came to Swamiji. Now, in retrospect, what, what I knew how to do is to connect with Master, with that cosmic energy in a very intimate way, you know, in, in my solitude. That relationship was more intimate. So with him, in his presence, by watching him, by osmosis almost that was transferred to each one of us who were in his presence or whoever listened to his talk, but especially being in his presence. I mean, he, he helped each one of us. I mean, he gave us the, almost the, the understanding how to manifest that outwardly. No, since this is a path of self-realization and meditation is the essence of our path, why is it important to know how to bring it out? Isn't it enough to have it inside yourself? I mean, <laughs> yeah, but isn't it, you know, the essence of true joy wanted to expand itself? So if this is who we are, we will never be in harmony with that um, consciousness if we only keep that joy that attunement that um, experience within ourselves eventually it will happen at this harmony within ourselves mm -hmm. uh, that that will need to be fixed and mm -hmm. that fix is just to learn how to express and to manifest outwardly so you are really in tune with a much more you know, cosmic reality. So this is something I, I'm learning. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's important to, for each one of us to find ways to express outwardly 
what what we experience in meditation otherwise it only will remain as a concept you know, as an intellectual, intellectual understanding, if it's not being manifested outwardly, in fact, you, you are even uh, missing great experiences, you know, that you can experience when you are manifesting mm -hmm. that in your daily life. So you said you started out with just a personal inward, and by the time Swami had passed, you had become a totally different person. Um, meaning that it's become natural to you to share in an outward way, or you become convinced that you have to? <laughs> A mix it? of both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm convincing myself I need to do this, uh -huh. and it's helping me tremendously to overcome many things that I'm still working uh -huh. with myself and to learn new aspects of my discipleship. Uh, I'm exploring new layers. It's also giving me an opportunity to attune myself to Swamiji at a different level that I did when he was in the body. So this is right now a good platform for me to get, get to um, uh, keep transforming myself in the process and getting to know myself more. So you, you made that statement, which I'm intrigued by. It's teaching me how to get in tune with Swami in a different way than I did when he was in the body. Mm -hmm. So what, what does that mean when you say that? What's the difference? Well, one is he's not in the body, but is it a different, are you learning different things from her? Or do you have to just speak more about what you mean by that? Yeah, when I was with him, I mean, in, when he was in his physical presence, it was easier in the sense like he, he could say something, you could see something about him, a gesture, a few words, uh, something he will write, he will ask you. So it was like a much more direct guidance of this is what I want to do or I feel inspired to do. And it was easier for me to visually see, to intuitively perceive. I had more help. You know, more of the senses were involved. You know, I could hear, I could see, I could, you know. Mm -hmm. But now it's like the, the eyes are not going to help. You know, I cannot see at that level. So now it's a much more intuitive process where the, the, the ability to listen has to be much more refined and a little bit more, yeah, refined. Uh, teaching and sharing with other people um, is just helping me to to find a way to share these teachings that 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 transfer Swamiji's consciousness, mm -hmm. and that's the bridge that I'm trying to figure out for myself. How can I share not just the teachings in terms of you know concepts mm -hmm. and words, but how can I transfer what I experienced when I was with Swami, Swami in the physical body, in his physical form? How can I transfer that consciousness while talking? You know, so, so that's the, the thing that I'm trying to um, learn. <laughs> um, what, what have you found that helps you do that better? Is there, are there any particular thoughts or techniques or preparation that, that makes you able to do that more effectively? Not really. I'm, I'm not doing, I'm not thinking about any tech. I'm just willing, you know, I'm, I, I'm willing, you know, whatever is being asked, I'm, I'm willing. And I just pray that <laughs> I'll be, you know, guided. But it's it's a challenge. It's not it's not something that comes uh, naturally to me. It's something that it's a challenge, and sometimes I struggle how mm -hmm. how to share and find a way that it will, you know, convey what, you know, I would like to be conveyed. Exactly. Um, can you put into words? what you would say is Swamiji's consciousness? Can you put, can you describe what that might be? In one word? 
impossible, <laughs> but maybe I can give you a few. Okay. <laughs> I think expansion for sure uh-huh. is a consciousness of expansion, of unity. Uh-huh. Always, I feel that sense of it's important that we find ways to to unite ourselves to greater realities with other people. I think that's one of Ananda's main jobs in the future to make sure we create that sense of unity and acceptance and willingness. Mm-hmm. But above all, expansion. Very interesting. Interesting because my very first meeting with Swamiji, before he even spoke, what I felt was the enormous expansion of his consciousness. I felt it had no boundaries. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I don't know if anyone else has ever said it exactly the same word, but that's exactly the word that I felt. He was so expanded. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Now, of course, um, let me think how to say this. Do you feel Swamiji, does Swami talk to you in your mind now, if that's not too personal a question? I feel him very present, Mm -hmm. very, very present. It took me a while after his passing to to come back to that uh, communication with him. He was always there, Mm -hmm. but I'm not, I wasn't always there. You know, I had to, I had to go through a few years of, you know, adjusting myself to a new reality, Mm -hmm. to a new, you know, everything, a new life. Mm-hmm. But I, I came back to a good place, and since the last two, three years, actually since I finished the book, mm-hmm. suddenly, you know, his presence, I'm, I'm, I'm able to perceive him in a way I didn't before. And it's, it's, it's very um, almost tangible, you know, I, I can almost feel sometimes like I feel like turning around like, wow, I mean, are you around? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Because it feels very real. I, I have many dreams with him. Mm-hmm. And in terms of inspiration, what I feel him, how I feel him the most is in, in terms of the ideas mm-hmm. that keep coming. Now he's manifesting in my life as creativity, mm-hmm. you know, which I can totally see it's not really my own because some of those ideas are so good. <laughs> like there is no other way that you know just it, it has to come from somewhere else and i, I i'm experience him now in term in terms of creativity inspiration and definitely high high energy mm-hmm. and right now i'm connecting to him at that level mm-hmm. so my job is to be willing to to find ways to manifest that creativity because that's where he is Mm -hmm. and as long as i meet him right now Mm -hmm. at that level i he will be able to change me in the process Mm -hmm. and my attunement with him has been evolving and it will continue to evolve it's not something i mean how i attune myself with swamiji a few years ago is very different Mm-hmm. How am I tuning myself to him right now? And I'm sure it will be different how will I tune myself with him in 10 years from now. It's, it's like an evolving relationship. Mm-hmm. And, and I have to adjust to that. I cannot box my relationship with Swamiji based on how he, how he behaved with me when he was in the body or how, how I related to him when he was in the body. So mm-hmm. it's, it's important for for me at least to to be flexible and find also creative ways to keep deepening my relationship with him Mm -hmm. and not just be satisfied with what i experienced Mm -hmm. when he was in the body so what you're also describing is that swamiji is is working i mean he's involved in this world in the sense that he's he's inspiring you to act in this world do you feel like Mm -hmm. You're I mean, carrying on his work, finishing the job. How would you, how would you say that? I never want to use those words of uh-huh. we are carrying the work because it can be overwhelming uh-huh. and actually not practical because it just gives you, a, I don't know, it's just, it's safer 
for some of us to put a little bit that aside, <laughs> just concentrate day by day. Uh -huh. So yes, I feel responsible right now for those people who I'm serving with, uh -huh. and those, you know, 200, 300 people, my responsibility is to make sure they feel inspired uh -huh. on a daily basis that they keep up with their meditation practices, mm -hmm. that we find ways to be in tune with one another, with Master's work, with Swamiji. And that's my real responsibility, to make sure that there is every day like an ever new energy that goes you know, out into the world in whatever little way. You know, that's what I feel I need to keep evolving myself in. You know, every day needs to be something into motion that goes somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Now, Narayani, you've had this very close opportunity to be with Swami when he was in the body. And of course, many people are coming long after he's passed now. Do you think it's an obstacle for attunement to never have met Swami when he was in his body? I don't think so at mm -hmm. all. In fact, I really developed my relationship with him way before I met him personally. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it, went, it was through his music, through his books, mm -hmm. through his lectures, which most of them I didn't even understand because mm -hmm. they, they were in a different language but it, it didn't matter to me. It, it really did its job uh -huh. for me. So absolutely, I mean, there is not an impediment at all. I know it will be wonderful to meet Swamiji and I can really understand when people say, I wish I could have met him. I, I feel that, but it's, it's, I think Swamiji knew that all these people we will nev and never will meet him, you know, would meet him. But I don't think, I think where they are right now, they can easily meet and community where he is right now. Mm -hmm. I, I think they, they have something with them. They have the potential to connect with him without the need of his physical presence. How do you think um, I mean, Master is Swami's guru. Swami acted most of the time initiating people in Master's name. Toward the end of his life, he took more personal responsibility for people spiritually. But he always had that, he was always deferring to Master as the guru, to Paramahansa Yogananda. How do you see that playing out now that both of them are you know, out of their bodies? And uh, how, how does Master fit in? How, how do they play together? Well, oof, that's a tough one. <laughs> big question, of course it yeah, is. it's a big one. Um, I don't know if I, if I have it all together yet in the sense that to me it's, it's now the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's just absolutely the same thing. But Swamiji is more approachable right mm -hmm. now. You know, it's like, it's like that friend that is constantly available for absolutely anything that you need. Uh -huh. you know, it's like, it's, it's the friend that you can complain about, you can tell him things about. With Master, you don't want to complain that much. You just want to do what, you know, what he asks of you and you just do it and willingly and joyfully. With Swamiji, you have the luxury to have a cup of tea and just complaining a little bit and sharing, you know, why I need to do this, that, you know, so. It's, I don't know, I'm trying to put those two consciousness together, which is the same one. Mm -hmm. but, but I think I relax a little bit more uh, when I need to, you know, communicate with Swami in a much more mundane way, you know, where I know, like, mm -hmm. I can't just say anything. Mm -hmm. And with Master, it's much more about, um, I'm here to, more like the building the work, Mm -hmm. and with Swamiji sharing how to go about it. That's fair enough. Now, tell me, you live in Mumbai now. And what, are you, mm -hmm. what are you doing here? How long have you been there? What's the work that you're doing? Yeah, we have been here 
for the past two years. We is Narayani and her, her husband, Shurjo. Yeah, yes. and Shurjo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, we kind of started a, a new center because so far we didn't have a center. It has been two years of incredible, <laughs> constant putting energy out in the middle of a city with so much noise and overpopulated there are only there are buildings everywhere so it's it's hard in a sense to to build a world when you don't have any any of your spiritual family support you know you don't have your peers so mm -hmm. it's it's a tremendous amount of energy you have to put out but it has been an incredible adventure it has brought out from us um, attitudes, attitudes and uh, ways of doing things we didn't know we could manifest or we could make them happen. So it has been a very also creative process for us because we had to start in a sense from a scratch mm -hmm. and Anatuna was says, okay, what do we want to, to bring out? What aspects of the teachings do we need to focus on what what the people need so in that process um, we have um, gained a lot mm -hmm. because it was like uh, you trying to um, channel as much as you want um, as much as you can not what you want mm -hmm. but what is needed Mm -hmm. And I think that's a constant question that Shurjo and I need to keep asking ourselves when we come with, with new ideas, not necessarily what we want and how we feel inspired, but is this going to benefit? Is this going to help people to bring them to their next level? I mean, because you may have the inspiration, but it not may sometimes be what really what people really need so that's also had been an interesting process for us i know that you're spanish by birth you lived in italy with swami you learned english and came to america your husband is indian and now you're settled in india is there something unique about indian devotees or oh yeah oh yeah okay i won't finish the question <laughs> so Describe to me what's special about being in Mumbai, what's different? How would you think about it? Honestly, I really love being in India and I love uh, the Indian devotees. There is a bath around them of devotion. They understand the teachings almost immediately. And above all, they understand the concept of guru discipleship almost instantly. And I think that's what we are all about, really. I mean, our path is a path of discipleship. I mean, this is not just a path of Kriya Yoga. What I feel is like our discipleship, you know, allows us to really bring Kriya Yoga into our daily lives. But we are really a path of discipleship. So to be able able to convey that to people that can understand it immediately. It's, it's a great joy and a great satisfaction because we can speak with the same language mm -hmm. that is not about Spanish, English, or Indian. It's the language of, you know, of the heart that is based in that guru-disciple relationship. Mm -hmm. And now we want to focus, Shurjo and I, more on how to attract more not just students mm -hmm. but devotees mm -hmm. and that's going to be an interesting process for us because in one sense we want to share the teachings in a very expansive way where everyone can feel inspired but there is a big difference between having followers mm -hmm. <laughs> and having devotees mm -hmm. So we'll need to find a way to fulfill both aspects of the work, but to give real quality energy to devotees, because that's what really mm -hmm. inspires us. Um, what does it 
I'm, this is my last question to you. What does it mean to you to be a disciple? To be willing. No. To be willing to do whatever is being asked. Mm -hmm. Put aside if you like it or not. Mm -hmm. If you are good at it or not. Mm -hmm. um, if you are capable or not. But mm -hmm. just be willing. Mm -hmm. Because that's what, you know, you, you, you will need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> and to be joyfully willing. Uh -huh. I think once we have that in place, so many things happen. You know, you, you will be guided and directed to wherever you need to be. And meet to whoever you need to meet. Oh, that's perfect. Mariani, I just, I, I'm always... I always love being in your company and you know that well. As I mentioned when we started this, the last 10 years of Swami's life when Narayani was often with him and for some reason circumstances often brought me so that the three of us were together. And Narayani, I, I, I wrote this somewhere, perhaps in recommending her book, that um, it reached the point where I could not think of Swamiji without also thinking of Narayani because their mm -hmm. consciousness had become so attuned. And I, mm -hmm. I feel that continues. So I highly recommend, I'm just going to do a shameless yeah. plug here. <laughs> and if you don't want to bother to get a physical book, you can write to Mumbai, India, Ananda, Mumbai. Okay. And thank you, sister. I, I'm just thank so you. grateful for the time.